Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are Psalm 102 and 103. Now, Psalm 102 is what we call a lament, the cry of a man who has been afflicted. And so this is how he starts. He says, hear my prayer, O Lord, don't hide your face from me. Last night, I was speaking to a man. I'm here at the men's camp up in this beautiful place in the Drakensberg. And this man s explained to me how for the last two years, he and his wife have been living in absolute agony because of the pain that she goes through. She's got this rare disease. And he, he would be praying prayers like this. Uh, my days vanish like smoke. My bones burn. My heart is blighted. He, the psalmist says, I forget to eat. I groan aloud. I'm like skin and bones. I'm like a desert owl among the ruins. I lie awake like a bird on a rooftop all alone. My days are like evening shadows. My life withers like grass. Sometimes when we, we go to the scripture and we're looking for that quick fix just to take it away from me, it doesn't come. But what we do get is this. We get God putting in his word Men and women who've gone through great agony and pain, and we, we can identify with them. I can't imagine what this friend of mine is going through. He, he said this, he says he goes through these devotions in the morning. He, he, he spends time, but he's, he, he's, he's, he's very much uh, gone through agony. And this is my prayer for you, my friend, and, and for others who are going through times like that. Others in the past have suffered too. And they, they drew comfort from words like this. Verse 12 says, But you, Lord, sit enthroned, and you endure through all generations, and you have compassion. God looks at you when you're going through agony like that, and he loves you. I know sometimes when you see the agony, you say, why can't he just remove it? Uh, we can hold on to God. And even through that, that the angst and the pain, look, look what the, this guy says. He says, for I know that you will rebuild Zion. In other words, you will rebuild your people. You will appear in glory and, and you will respond to the prayer of the destitute. And so uh, let's pray for those who are in trouble like, like my friend. And then he says, let this be written for future generations that people not yet created may praise the Lord. He hears the groans of the prisoner and he releases those condemned to death. In the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens of the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They'll wear out. We will all wear out like a garment, but you will remain. They'll remain the same. The children of your servants will live in your presence and be established before you. And so I love chapters like this that they don't give an immediate solution, but describe the enormity of God. When I look across a lake like this, I think, God, you are awesome. And, and, and God is mindful. He's mindful of the pain. Now, in Psalm 103, uh, this is a huge, this is a Psalm of David, and it's just packed with theology. He starts by saying, my soul, praise God. And he ends by saying, listen, you angels in heaven, you also better praise God. And this is what he says about the Lord. He says, my, forget not the benefits of God. This is what God does. He forgives our sin. He redeems our life from the pit. He crowns us with love and compassion. Just think of that. Crown, love, and compassion. He satisfies your desires. Your youth is renewed like eagles. He works righteousness and justice for the oppressed. This is a, Theology is the study of God. This chapter, you could spend hours in here looking at what God does, who He is. He, he's compassionate. He's gracious. He's slow to anger and abounding in love. Now, I love how it moves. It moves from describing God's nature straight into the gospel, describing the gospel. The gospel is because of God's nature. The gospel comes out of who God is. This, look at this for beautiful Old Testament description of the gospel. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so is his great love. As far as the east is from the west, so he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father's compassion on his children, the Lord has compassion on us uh, because he, he knew us before we were even formed, it says in verse 14. 
The gospel, the good news that Jesus doesn't treat us like we deserve, that he gives us his grace, he gives us his, our forgiveness, is because of who he is, because of his nature. And then he ends by saying, praise the Lord, all you angels, all you mighty ones, all the children that are to come. God sits enthroned because of his great love and his great mercy. We have forgiveness. He gives us gifts like this. He gives us each other. One last word on that friend of mine that I spoke to yesterday. This is what his testimony was. He said, you know, I've been suffering alone, but, but now I'm with God and I'm with his people. And I see, I see that God has planted me in his house and that God, God has his arms around me. For those who are going through a tough time today, I trust that these verses speak to you.